This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mike Kenny and Barbecue Company. Mike Kenny and Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Kenny will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary this Thursday from 4 to 7 and over at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery off of Tiffin Avenue this Sunday from 11 to 6. Be sure to hit up the Mad Canadian social media sites, Facebook and Twitter, to find out more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, uh, just outside of Toledo in a place called Perrysburg, uh, based company, uh, veteran-owned, veteran-operated, uh, all coffee is roasted to order, so it's not sitting around on a shelf or in a warehouse or in the back of a truck for weeks and months on end. You're getting your beans freshly roasted. They're direct bought from farms in many far off lands, uh, making the beans both organic and fair trade certified. So you're making sure that the beans are being handled and roasted and shipped with integrity, both coming to the Iron Bean Coffee Company and coming from them and to you, you're making sure that it is fresh and moral uh, the entire way through. So if you want to support a good company from Ohio owned and operated by a Marine, well, then I bring to you the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everybody? Hopefully everyone had a good weekend. But to get into our start, our our um, standard, standard and grade. grade. Yes, standard and grade here. Or as we sometimes accidentally refer to it, scarlet and grade. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. puns. Yes. It's all puns. All right, work. Jared. Let's go ahead and get into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right here. How are you doing today, Jared? I don't have uh, much in the way of complaints. It was a uh, it was a weekend that looked like it was going to be boring, um, but then it then it got fun towards the end. Uh, but I think we'll talk about uh, some of the chaos, some of the shenanigans in in our in our Tuesday episode. Right now we're focusing on Ohio State. Right now it is uh Ohio State versus Maryland and all that transpired uh trans transpired? That's the right word, right? Uh from a uh, whistle to whistle. And then another whistle and then yep. another there were a bunch of whistles. It's it's a football game. <laughs> but the point is is that Ohio State defeats Maryland 66 to 17 making it uh Kyle, I almost had the score prediction dead on again, and then a pick six happened. And, you know, one day, one day I'll hit that one day, one day I'll hit that score prediction dead on. Um, I am no longer in first place on the slip picks. I had a terrible week. But again, I think we'll talk about that more on Tuesday than we will today. Who's in first, Jared? Out of everybody or out of or between the two of us? Uh, yes. <laughs> do, do you have the you answer? Have the, is yes. Do you have the sole lead for the slip picks right now? Or are you tied? I am tied with Robert Allen for 27. There you go. I told you, Jared, it's a steady climb up. And yeah, now yeah, yeah. listen, you know what? We'll get into it on the Tuesday. That, that is what the Tuesday episodes for right now. We're talking <laughs> Ohio state and Maryland. Yes. Yep. Ohio State 66-17 right from the get-go. Uh, thought Ohio State just played very well. Offensively, they could not be stopped. They they literally can't. Other than taking a kneel to go into halftime, the first stringers touched down at every, every drive there. What, what, what more do you want to ask for this offense here? Yeah, exactly, gangland. Who needs a punter? And, and, yes punt. exactly because ohio state did not even punt yeah. once in this game ohio state no punts zero punts uh, yeah. 
Yeah, did and last week did they punt with the first stringers? I because I think Mirko only punted have, once, and I think it was uh, with the backups. I'd have to look. I don't. I do not believe. Yeah, that Gangland they did. says it, the one punt for Mirko was during a McCord drive. So there you go. All right. I'm just going to trust that Gangland knows what he's talking about. Yeah. So, so this game here, before we go into grading out uh, the positions here, Maryland, and we saw it right from the beginning, Maryland had their goal of, you're not running against us. You're going to have to beat us through the air. And <laughs> CJ Stroud had himself a game over 400 yards in the, in the air, about 73% completion rating on there, five touchdowns, zero interceptions, zero turnovers uh, for the team here. It's, it was just a well, just a very great game from CJ Stroud here. So for those who, for those number of weeks ago who were giving CJ Stroud the crap of this and should bench him and should start somebody else. I, I, I just want you all just to apologize. Yeah. CJ Stroud. A lot, a lot of people. He, a lot he, of is, he is playing. He's playing amazing right now. This is, in fact, dare I say, he's playing better than uh, Justin Fields no. did. Pause. 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 Listen. Okay. Let's let's calm down. Statistically, okay. he is. Statistically, he is. Jared. Did Justin Fields have the wide receiving core as a sophomore? as a second year player that no, he didn't. This wide receiving core is bonkers. This, this Look at this, Jared. We got, we got a bunch of yeses in here. Yeah, but they're all coming from two people. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> slow, slow down, slow down. Oh. Let, let's, let's, let's listen. Maryland and Rutgers are both good teams, but neither of them are great teams. Let's let's all be very happy about what Stroud is doing. Let's all be very excited about what Stroud is doing. But let's let's not go overboards now. Let's not go overboard. Yeah, the the weapons, yeah. the weapons that CJ Stroud has around him right now might. And mm -hmm. By the way, the offensive line too. the offensive line in front of him, realistically speaking, CJ Stroud's the weakest point of this offense. And that's not a knock on him as much as it is a compliment of everyone who's around him. Look, look at the offensive line in front of him. It, the, the, the recruiting stars are next level. If you look at that offensive line in front of him, the wide receivers, uh, they, they did a thing on Fox Talking about how basically every wide receiver, except Chris Olave, who, by the way, is pretty good, uh, was basically like one of the top wide receivers in their entire class. Yeah, yeah the, for, the first first string here, zero sacks in the game. I think the sole sack came in the fourth quarter there. I, I believe it was for I think it was uh, I think it was McCord was in, I believe. But uh, yeah, zero sacks for the for this um, yeah for this offensive line to let up. Yeah, McCord took a five. Oops, hit my mic. Uh, McCord took a five yard sack. So yeah, there were zero sacks on C.J. Stroud. And by the way, we were all mm -hmm. kind of worried about this Ohio State. You know, during the game, this Ohio State one dimensional. Maryland's kind of stuffing the run. And two two points to that. One, as Kyle said earlier. Maryland made it their job. They they said, you know what? Let's let CJ Stroud beat us. And yeah, and he I think, did. And I think in the first, I think in the first quarter, they had Henderson. It was something like seven carries for ten yards in that first quarter. So it was something ridiculous like that. I'd, I'd have to find my notes here, but but yeah, they just found a way. And kudos to Coach Day and the rest of the coaching staff. But 
for getting a good game plan, getting Olave open, Wilson open, and Henderson. Henderson, four catches for 67 yards and in by this the way, game as well. Considering he had, quote unquote, a bad game running the ball, which I think a lot of people are like, oh, Ohio State was a bit one dimensional that game. He had a bad, he still had 106. He still averaged 6.4. Yeah, it's just that his law we're, we're just we're just so used to seeing Henderson break a long one. He only had two touchdowns and his only long was 17 yards. He had three, <laughs> but two on the ground. But yes, yes, I, I was referring strictly to rushing. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get let's get into the grades here, Jared. As always, start with the quarterback here. I, I think this is two weeks in a row. I'm going to give I'm going to give the quarterback an A plus rating here. Seventy three percent completion. Uh, CJ did not get sacked. Five touchdowns, over four hundred yards passing. A plus. I agree. Uh, by the way, I like this question down here from Gangland. Can we use more screens to free up the running game? I think. Oh, I they- love. I think love that love that wheel route love that wheel route by Henderson there uh, I think the way they were trying to counter that to free up the run game was one as Kyle was saying throwing swings and wheels out to Henderson in the flat that that was working so you're still getting Henderson the ball just in a different way how many how many receptions did four he he nearly in 60 uh four for 60 four catches for 67 yards slow down jared um so he still got that going um yeah i know but but and the other way you free someone up in the run game which is what you saw ohio state doing especially in the second quarter the touchdown pass to olave being the prime example of it you you just you start doing some play actions the if the linebackers want to crash the line every time you action to the running back let them because you you can't stop, you can't stop JSN, Olave, Ruckert, and Wilson. One on one. If you're gonna take, yeah, if you're gonna almost, crash those linebackers in, if your safety's first steps are gonna be towards the line of scrimmage, because you're actioning towards the running back, Lord help you trying to cover those four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more on the wide receivers, but um, before we get to wide receivers, writing back here, I give him a a plus. I, yeah. I, th- I thought they did really well. Not able to, not being able to break along ones was it really against them, but yeah, but when they were they're in uh, when they were in pa- when they're in passing situations, uh, Henderson just becoming a really, really good asset in that pass uh, protection there. As and, a and true as a freshman receiver. here, it is, it is, it is awesome to see. Like you don't see true freshman running backs get back there and be able to pass block like the way Henderson does. It's, and, and you also have to. It's, it's such an amazing addition to have. And you also have to factor in what he was able to do catching the ball too, out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that yeah. it, that was maybe the difference between Ohio State struggling maybe a bit offensively and not mm-hmm. because i think a lot of what we were seeing and again we're still talking about a quarterback who is in his first handful of starts we're talking about a quarterback who you know doesn't necessarily know every single route on every single play they're probably still giving him half field reads to be able to just be like, uh, number one, number two, nope. I'm going to hit my microphone again. Dump it off to the running back. And then Henderson makes plays. He had a 30-yard reception. Yep. Uh, Gangland asks, does uh, this Trevion have a, have a drop yet? I don't believe so. I, I would have to look I it up, but I, can't I don't believe con- so. I can't confirm that. Yeah. Unsure. All right. Uh, wide receivers. One. Wide receivers. I give him an A plus as well. Yeah. Uh, out there, just just who, who was that? I think I think it was Olave mentioned that um, that it seemed like at the uh, that Maryland thought 
that the wide receivers were kind of just parachuted into the into the field. They were just able just to get open with ease. Like it's we are spoiled this 2021 season. We are just spoiled with this with this wide receiver group and just enjoy the run here. Just enjoy the run with Lave, Jason, Wilson, Ibuka. Come, coming up and starting to see more time here. Yeah, uh, I want to get to Buka here later on in our grades here, but Buka coming on with the uh, seeing more more playing time as well. He has three catches for the game here. Yeah, we'll we'll see, we'll see how how he does um, moving on. But yeah, I give the wide receivers an A plus. I can't I can't disagree. Tight ends. <clears throat> record had record had one he should have caught in one yeah. of the first drives there er, uh, yeah, so early drop by record he short armed that one let's let's call a spade a spade he knew the safety was coming he he didn't he didn't go for it yeah so maybe an a minus i think a minus able to get some good blocks on uh i can't remember which one but there, there was a few running plays yeah. that tight end had some great blocks there yeah. and yeah, I give him an A minus. Yeah, there. Not, not, yes, that's right. It was a, it was that Henderson touchdown. Yes. Yeah, uh, nothing special for the tight ends in the passing game. Uh, Ruckert had one. Stover had one. Ruckert had that drop uh, you already mentioned, but they did a very good job uh, blocking. So yeah, I think an A minus. I think an A minus is. And then, and then the slobs, A plus. Yeah, um, you don't, a, you don't, you don't allow, you don't allow any sacks on your start. I don't even know if they had a. I don't even know they let up a quarterback hurry. I think so. As well. I think so. I think we saw. I, I want to say so because I think we saw um, Stroud get flushed out of the pocket maybe once or twice, um, but it was it was rare, and in those situations there were at least like give the coverage give the defensive backs for by maryland some chance because it was it's not like he ever received immediate pressure um yeah well according uh, to the official stats here maryland had zero quarterback hurries but i i i disagree but that's fine all right yep slobs a plus there and, and, and like what we else we give before they uh, the maryland was like we aren't going to let you run the ball we're going to make you beat us passing and they, and Henderson still got a hundred yards. Uh, Master Teague looked really good in relief. Uh, only four carries, but seven point eight a pop. Uh, and got a touchdown there too. I think it was like third and five, and they handed the ball off to Master Teague. And I'm sure a lot of Buckeye fans, third and five, and you hand the ball off to Master Teague. I'm sure a lot of people are probably thinking, "Oh no, we're, we're going to kick a field goal here." Yeah. Yeah. Grown says gangland here, but nope. He, he breaks off an 11 yard run and you get credit to that offensive line opening the hole there and he gets a touchdown as well. Yeah. A plus for the offensive line. I thought they had a fantastic you know who else game. Gets an a- you want to know who else gets an A plus Jared? Uh, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Yes. And the Iron Bean Coffee Company as well. Are, are you, are so you, let's, let's do it. Let's do a quick, let's do a quick ad break and we'll get to the, uh, to the defense here. All right. Who's going first? Uh, I'll go. I'll go. The Bay Canadian barbecue company based out of Cary, Ohio, uh, great seasonings, great person, great food. And he's delivering all of that in his food truck. Um, you can catch him in K Ca- in Cary this Thursday, uh, at the OLC shrine cafeteria from four to seven o'clock. So, just throw out your dinner plans, go out to Cary, Ohio, and get some of that delicious mad Canadian food. And also make some room for Sunday, head on up to the Crafted Nano Brewery in Finley off of Tiffin Avenue between 11 and 6 o'clock. So you can go there for dinner. You can get there for lunch as well. Just just clear your schedule off and go get some mad Canadian uh, this weekend as well. Uh, if you need more information about the mad Canadian, hit up his social medias facebook and twitter to search mad canadian bbq you'll find him get you some more information on him about him and his food truck mad canadian barbecue company who are the official barbecue of the Cary high school blue devils 
This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I already told you about them in the first ad read. Marine-owned, Ohio-based, Integrity-based, uh, organic, and and fair trade certified, and all of that stuff. Uh, well, they also came out with a, a line, a brand new line of flavored coffees, and one of those flavored coffees uh, is the cinnamon roll. And uh, one of our one of our patrons, one of our patreons over on the Discord. Um, said uh, he gave us a quick review of the cinnamon roll. He says, you open the bag and it's like stepping into a Cinnabon store. The smell of buttery cream and cinnamon make you wish it was 50 degrees outside. Fantastic. Smooth taste. The flavors don't overpower the coffee flavor a bit, but complimentary or excuse me, but complement it. Perfect. I, what, what, what else could you ask for? I think that's a fantastic review. I think that's everything you could want uh, in a cinnamon roll flavored coffee. Uh, they have, like I said, they came out with a brand new line of flavored coffees. Uh, also, there is a Buckeye, which is a chocolate and peanut butter flavored coffee. Uh, there's a butter pecan, a salted caramel mocha, a vanilla hazelnut, and a bananas foster. That's that new line of flavored coffees. Uh, and they also, they have more flavored coffees, including their, um, including their backroom murder coffees, uh, a few of their standard coffee, uh, flavored coffees like the grog and a whole line of unflavored coffees. Uh, you can go check all of these out for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, let's hit up the defense here, Jared. Defensive line here. The defensive line had, I'm just looking up here, five. Five sacks for this game, and it also had an additional four tackles for loss as well. So a total of nine nine plays that ended up for, for a loss there. I, I'd say the defensive line probably got an A here. Uh, they, they were able to get pressure on the quarterback, made uh, Baby Tua uh, a lot more uncomfortable back there, forcing um, – forcing interceptions and held held the rushing uh, attack to only 1.6 yards per, per rushing attempt as well. And that so is I'd a give bit the skewed. defensive line a solid A. I think that it is a bit skewed um, by the fact that Tua lost like, excuse me, baby Tua, uh, like 61 yards rushing because of the sacks. Um, but yeah, uh, even then, but even on top of that, Maryland gave up on the running attempt fairly quickly. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they, they collectively had over 100 yards rushing between their between their two running backs. Um, but again, I think a lot of those I think a lot of those came against the second team late in the game. Um, so I, I it's. Overall, I thought Maryland's defense played played uh, really well. I thought this was one of the best games by the defensive ends this year, especially considering the level of competition, because uh, Maryland does uh, have a, a a pretty seniored offensive line. Uh, not saying that they're like great per se, but you know it wasn't Akron. These were good offensive linemen. These were good, solid Big Ten starting offensive linemen, and. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that Zach Harrison had one of his better games of the year so far. Sawyer got his first, at least his first solo sack of the year. I'm not sure if maybe he picked up a half sack somewhere along the way, but he picked up his, uh, his first solo sack of the year uh, on a, on a uh, sack strip. So yeah, I, I thought the defensive ends had one of their best games of the year so far. And the defensive tackles also played really well. Uh, Haskell Garrett does get hurt in this game. They took him to the tent right away. It looked bad because it looked like he didn't want to put any weight on his foot at all. Um, it looked bad, took him straight to the medical tent, but then he went to the bench and not the locker room after the medical tent. So that's a good sign. Um, not a guy Ohio State could stand to lose, especially on a defense so young. Having that sort of veteran out there is incredibly helpful. But yeah, but 
sticking straight to this game, I thought the defensive line, especially the defensive ends, uh, had one of their best games of the year so far. Mm, yep, absolutely. Linebackers here. Linebackers are still are still a position I still have a hard time putting my finger on, but you have uh, similar to like the defensive line, not letting up many big plays on the ground. Okay. in coverage there. So I guess an A minus I, 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 or an A, I, I thought the linebackers did exactly what they needed to in this game. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. I'm starting to think that <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there, Matt. I'm getting there. I'm starting to think that the two starting linebackers or three, if you count the bullet, in which case Hickman would be the third, but the, the two starting linebackers for this team should be Simon and Chambers. Uh, no, no disrespect to anybody else, but Chambers is looking incredible when he is out there. He looks disruptive when he's out there. He's fast. He's reactive. He's good against the run. He's good against the pass. I think that I, I think that the two starting linebackers, three, if, if it's Hick, if you're counting Hickman as a linebacker, three with Hickman should be Simon and Chambers. I'm I I've been playing with. The, I don't think that's the first time I've said that, but I think this is the first time I'm saying it with this much conviction and spending this much this this much time on it. Um, but I I really want to like double down, triple down on. I I really think Chambers needs and he has been, but even then more so reps at the linebacker with the starters. Yeah, those those are two of your top uh, players with most tackles for this game here. Chambers, Simon, and Eichenberg all had seven tackles in that game. And Mitchell, I mean, Mitchell is the, the older of the group here, and he had himself a pretty good game too. He had five tackles in that game, and the one that was pretty pretty memorable was the one where he blew up the the play that went wide and – took Maryland for a, a big loss there. So I'm almost there, Jared. I'm almost there. I, I think Mitchell has his moments too, but yeah, I, I, I think Chambers, you, you can definitely make the argument for that too. I, I think Mitchell should get more of the snaps if you're playing. And again, this is what Ohio State was doing this game because we saw probably the mo among like competitive reps when the starters were still out there. I think we saw chambers more this game than we did in any other game, which makes sense because if you're playing a, a more of a traditional, like big 10 run first offense, Mitchell might be the better option. But if you're playing Maryland, a pass first offense, or if you're just bit up big early and the other team's going to be forced to pass more often, again, like we saw with Maryland this game, I, I think that Chambers is a significantly better linebacker when we talk about coverage skills than Mitchell. Well, Maryland here, so speaking of Maryland here, Maryland had 13 different receivers catch the ball in that game. 13. Yeah. So they, they were spreading the ball out all over the place. I mean, their their main their main one folks got their got their ca um catches when um when thrown to them, but yeah, they, they were spreading that ball all over the field all game. Well, and it's also worth noting that two of their three best wide receivers basically didn't play. One didn't play, the other got uh one reception and then got hurt on that play. So it, yep. when you talk about Maryland spreading it around, a lot of that was out of pure desperation on their part. So, so the linebackers, Jared, a, I'm good with a, all right. All right. Cornerbacks here, cornerbacks. They did. Maryland did um, have 279 yards in the air, two touchdowns, also two interceptions, another pick six here for uh for the defense how, how would you rate the cornerbacks in this game i have no complaints uh 
even though they've let up pretty much pretty much almost uh, 300 yards in this game. I well, you can't put all of that on the corners. Uh, okay, isn't that's why I'm just asking the question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Maryland's best wide receiver, statistically speaking, was their tight end, was he not? Mm hmm. So, I mean, there's there's that uh, you get all of those sacks and all of those pressures, which I, you know, at least some of those were caused by coverage. Um, the the longest uh, the longest pass was, I believe, on a screen play or a darn near close of a screen play. So that wasn't exactly even like a downfield play. Um yeah, it, yeah, it was a screen to uh, Rakeem that went 43 yards. But other than that one, the next longest uh, reception was 20 yards and then 18 and then 11, 12, 12. So, yeah, they, they kept everything in front of them there. So, yeah, I mean, I understand. Well, you know, but also consider this is that Yes, while Baby Two throws the ball for 279 yards, it took him 39 attempts to get there. You know, he they they hold him uh, a, a very good quarterback, by the way, one of the better quarterbacks in the Big Ten. He just doesn't have much around him to. But, you know, he he's still injuries. Yeah, uh, only only 7.2 yards per attempt. Compare that to 12.3 by C.J. Stroud. Yeah. So we'll, we'll give, we'll give the, yeah, we'll, we'll give the, um, the corners a, a solid a in this game too. By the way, McCord had a yards per average of 8.7. All right. You can't just look at the yards. Safety. Safeties here, Jared. How would you rate the safeties here? I, I feel like we didn't even think or talk much about the safeties, which is exactly what you want. Like I, you know, there there was the one big play, which is the exact thing that safety is supposed to prevent. Um, we know how you feel, Nomad. Uh, gangland. <laughs> or, yeah, excuse me, gangland. Um, I, I, you know, considering, again, we, we do try and grade these things based off of expectation. And I, I don't think that the safeties without Proctor are ever going to be great this year. But if you can go most of the game without thinking about the safeties, I think that's a win. And I think that's, that's mostly where we were with this game. I just, I don't even, uh, Matthew says there was one play that would have been a touchdown, but was overthrown. Um, uh, you know, th those happen. Um, those happen. That's just, that's, a, that's a thing that happens. Yeah, it, it was, yes. Yeah, somebody, I, I remember seeing it where they, they had, uh, they had trips to the right or the bottom of the screen. And there's only two Buckeye defenders on that side. And the one played up and towards the middle. And then you had that left two receivers and only one defensive back there. And that defensive plat back played, more of a middle ground zone and nobody wasn't that far back there. But yeah, it, if, if that was thrown, even, even it was under thrown, it, that would have been a touchdown for Maryland. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's right. Everything Kyle just said, well, gangland, we don't know that Burke was responsible. Um, we, we don't necessarily know that. Uh, that that maybe he was expecting safety help behind him. Um, so I agree with you, safety. by the way, that I, I, I think you're correct. Um, but we don't know that. Yeah. So what would you give the safeties in this game? B plus. Oh, OK, I, I was saying a minus, but that's fine. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go with B, I'll go with B plus here. So if you look at well, a couple more, a couple more here, special teams here, Jared. Jared, special teams here. Are we finally going to break the streak here? Are we finally going to get a touchdown? Are we finally going to get a touchdown from special teams on a return? So a couple thoughts about special teams. One, no missed kicks. Two, no punts. Uh, no punts for the starters, anyway. No, no there were no punts, period. No punts, period. 
Um, and I thought the return game was the best looking Ohio State return game I've I've ever seen or well, not ever seen, but like in the past in like the the Ryan Day era, the best return game I've ever seen in the Ryan Day era, probably, probably in the last seven, eight years, maybe, maybe even the Meyer Day era. Um, one of the better return days I've seen for Ohio State. Um, mm-hmm. Not not one of the best, though, because. Anyway, I'm I'm overreaching. I'm being hyperbolic. Yeah, Emeka Emeka had uh, four kick returns for an average of forty one and a half yards. Matthew asks, should Wilson continue to field punts? No, you have all yeah. these talented wide receivers begging to get on the field. Why not let Abuka do it? Who also seems to be incredibly talented with it. Um, yeah, I, I would I would definitely give Emeka the chance there, unless. Unless the special teams coach just doesn't trust having that young of a receiver trying to field punt, especially if they're high and then surrounded by defenders there. Well, maybe part part of the problem with having a guy like Abuka back there is that since he's not getting a bunch of offensive plays, he might be a little too eager to make something happen on special teams and maybe not tossing up the fair catch when he probably should. Um but that's again, that's just how much do you trust him as a special teams coordinator? Yeah. Um, so either way, a plus a for, for special now teams. We'll give here. them the plus when they, when they get a touchdown, we'll give them the plus they, well, a, pl- a plus no kicks missed. No, no punts here. They can have an a plus when they score a touchdown. Wow. Jeez. Jared being so strict. We have to end the streak. Team. They can't get an A plus until they get a touchdown. How right. long is coaching? It yeah, and and coaching here, I'd give them an A to just yeah. overall great game here. Eleven you, years. You, uh, Has it seriously been eleven years? Yeah, it's two thousand and ten since the last time that they've had a return. Yeah, coaching, coaching. Yeah, you you get an A. For this here, you you win by was it forty nine points here? Yeah, solid day for the coaching staff. More than doubled the Vegas line. Mm-hmm. All right, Jared, let's get into some sloop, ask Sloopcast questions here. Austin formation leads us off here. Is Olave the greatest wide receiver in Ohio State history? I want to. I'm going to say no. But my God, what a compliment to him that that's a good question. You know what he needs, Jared? He needs to be able to uh, help break that streak and return a punt for a touchdown with only seven. With only, excuse me, with only six blockers instead of seven. No, no, it's it was it was eight people. It was seven. It, David Boston was the eighth player. Yes. Oh, and you're I'm saying, saying he, he needs, needs to, to go one, one up that. He, you're saying he needs, he needs to, go to one, one up that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's a worthy <laughs> goal. Unfortunately, Ohio State doesn't play Pitt this year. Oh, darn. All right. Uh, Nomad, over under Ohio State line against Indiana at 24 and a half. We'll find this out for another week here as Ohio State's off this, this next weekend. I, over. I'd probably say, yeah, 24 and a half, 21 and a half. I think it's probably the number we would see. Uh, if 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 Ohio State's line against Indiana is twenty four and a half, I'm picking Ohio State to cover, and I'm 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 putting my easy money stamp on it. Mm-hmm. Ohio State right. wins that game by thirty without trying too hard. Michigan Bucknut, did the DBs seem to have a hard time getting off their blocks, or was it just me? I I don't I I, I don't feel. I, I I don't feel like I walk away with that opinion. Um, Burke is not necessarily the best at that so far. He's a true freshman. Um, let, let him get some muscle on his body. Um, well, hopefully Cam Brown's okay. Cause I feel like he is one of the better guys on the team at that. Um, I, I maybe, maybe, um, but I, I think when you have the as young a secondary as Ohio State has right now, I think that's going to be a consequence of that. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Uh, question from Nomad here. 
After only six penalties against Rutgers and four against Maryland, will we continue to see a reduction in Ohio State flags? Yes, and I guarantee they're going to have zero this weekend. Ha. Funny. Funny joke. Uh, but no, no, that's that's definitely um, a great point, uh, especially early on. Ohio State had a lot of penalties in the early early games here, really helping out, uh, not seeing as many dumb penalties in this game here. So definitely uh, really liking what we're seeing from – from um oh what's the word I'm going to use just mentally being mentally prepared uh, coming into the game not making mental mistakes dumb mental um, penalties. You have an offensive line who's coming together because even though it was all returning starters but one, they were all in different positions, so they're figuring their stuff out their relationship with the quarterback and this and his snap count is coming together. You just have a quarterback who is gaining experience by leaps and bounds week to week. You have an entire defense of young guys. They'll they'll they're it's still it's a it's a process of figuring it out and it's a process of getting better every week and I think the penalties are just uh indicative of that. I don't know if that's the right word, but we're moving forward regardless. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Buckeye Zach, do we see Stroud at any point this season cover 500 yards? Is that even possible for a Buckeye quarterback? Will this feat align with Olave attributing to the all-time wide receiver record? I think the only way we see Stroud get 500 yards is if Ohio State gets into a shootout with another team. Um. Uh. Yeah, Haskins did. It was. It was something about five thirty. Um. But that he was in. That was Ohio State in a shootout, was it not? Because like, Stroud could have thrown for five thirty in this game. Had Day had, if Day was still as pissed at Maryland as he was a couple years ago, you might have seen that. You you easily may have seen that. Um, you might see, maybe it happens against Michigan. Cause I think, I think day, uh, still has a word or two for Harbaugh. So maybe if, if Ohio state really takes it to Michigan or if Ohio state, especially in the playoffs, um, cause I, I don't necessarily know who Ohio state gets into a shootout with in, in the big 10 mm-hmm. at the moment, but especially like if you get into the playoffs, uh, you get into a shootout with a Bama or someone like that. Um, yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah, he did not. Did Haskins not get 500 didn't. yards. He had mm-hmm. Haskins. He had in the Northwestern uh, game. He had in the Big Ten Championship game in 2018. He had 499 yards. Ah, okay. But then he had a he had a whole bunch of other games. He had over 400 against Maryland, 470 against Purdue, 412 against Minnesota, 455 against Indiana. So he had a number of 400-yard games. Cool, cool. All right, uh, let's see here. Nomad with some quick questions here. What is the one aspect of this Ohio State team that gives you pause? Um, what, what happens if you – play a team with a really great wide receiver core. Um, that, that would, that would be of concern for me. For me, for me, it starts with the, the line there and it's Ohio state going up against a good offensive line, not being able to get pressure. And, and it doesn't matter how good of defensive backs and linebackers you have not getting pressure you're setting you're setting them up for to fail. So my worry my worry is the defensive line, especially the defensive ends, not getting the pressure on the quarterbacks. Uh, Nomad also asks which which remaining Big Ten team will give Ohio State the toughest matchup. Uh, I'm sorry the um, the t- the 
remaining remaining teams the the team i'm probably most worried about and a lot of this has to do with the health of sean clifford would be penn state um i think that they have a talented wide receiver court which is the exact same thing or which is the exact thing i just said i was concerned about with ohio state mccord while not perfect i think is good enough um but that's that's a health what i did i say um (laughs) um clifford um clifford is good enough um i i so if he's healthy if clifford is healthy we'll see i i think that's probably one of ohio state's biggest stumbling blocks left i think they match up well against (laughs) iowa because i don't think iowa could could hold up against a team with Ohio state's just athletic power. Um, nor do I think Michigan or Michigan state can Penn state's yeah. the one team that concerns me. Um, I don't think Penn state is good enough either gangland. Um, especially like I said, if Clifford's out, but they're, they might not be good enough to beat Ohio state three times, but they're good enough to beat Ohio state once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I I think, I think it's Penn state, Penn state's offense. When it's clicking, it's hard to stop them. I'm not really too worried about any of the other offenses that Ohio state would have to face this year. Michigan state's, What's that? Oh, Matthew asks, but what dominant offense will we play this season? I, I don't see one on the current schedule, but the playoffs are. You want to know who had, you, you want to guess who probably has the most uh, dominant offense other than Ohio State? You want to guess who that is? Uh, we're already going over it. Let's not play the guessing game. It's Sparty. Okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Matthew. <laughs> Not Clemson. All right, uh, let's see here. Is Tyreek Williams truly a man amongst boys? As yeah. Buckeye Zach. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, at this point in the season, what is your prediction on total season yards for Trivion Henderson? Oh, I don't. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not trying to play that game right now. Um, yeah, he's at. He's at six twelve. He's at six twelve right now. So, let's say seventeen hundred. Let's say 1700. A lot of it just depends upon his health. And if Ohio state gets up big, how many times they even bothered give him the ball because he's a freshman and you, you don't want to give a freshman a huge number of carries. And yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I, I'd I'd say I, I, I'll set the over under at 17, 17 Oh one. Let's see at this point. Nope, they answered that one already. All right, last question. When is the next year of the fullback play going to occur? And did they forget to draw that up against Maryland? I think, honestly, we we lived years against or lived years as the Shiano defense. What does Shiano like to do? He likes to move his freaking linebackers right up against the line of scrimmage which does what puts them in horrible position to defend against the pass, which does what leaves the fullback wide open on a quick little out route. Uh, I think that yeah. was, I think that was day dialing up specifically against Shiano. Let's not forget that it was all, all those fullbacks and tight ends that cost Ohio state the game against Iowa during that blowout was against the Shiano defense. I, I think that was a bat. I think that was a shot straight across the bow, specifically at Shiano's defense. Yep. All right, Jared, that is all the questions we have for today. Kyle, we're going super duper over. I just want to uh, encourage everyone to come join the discord at discord.thesloopcast.com. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I have a fun date history here that from, I'm going to steal from, the goat Tony Gerdeman here. All right, all right, all right. As as we're recording this on October 10th, back in 2018, a certain quarterback was a perfect 10 for 10 passing against Rutgers. Oh, God. You remember who that was, Jared? I do. That, who would that, that be? That, that was uh, Tathan. 
It was Tathan Martell going 10 for 10 performance against the Rutgers you wanna, three uh, years ago as we're recording this. Do, do, do you do you want to know why Ohio State's better than Oklahoma? We, why is that? We didn't put our arrogant ass overrated quarterback in the starting lineup and then leave him there for years to try and prove something like Oklahoma's been doing. Yeah. Boom. Uh, I, I do. Why Oklahoma is still that, messing around with Rattler, I'll never understand. More on that on the Tuesday right. episode. All right, Jared, that's that's it for today. Go ahead and uh, end us off here. Tonight's ending music we brought to you by a uh, local Columbus-based um, country artist. Uh, her name is Angela Purley. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name, but this is the Sloopcast, so it might not be. Uh, she's playing... Um, at the uh, at the Land Grant Brewing Company, uh, the one that, uh, down on West Town Street, uh, this Thursday. So uh, you can uh, go see her play uh, with M I I R uh, at the Land Grant uh, Brewery on this Thursday night. So. Uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Angela Purley. <laughs>